Okay, okay, testing, testing, one, two, three, okay, looking okay. <sighs> okay, yeah, we managed to get up early. Not through lack of myself attempting to wake myself up constantly. But yes, we did it. Today, we are up bright, or not even bright at this point. It is currently dark out. <laughs> uh, we are up early. Today. Yeah, that is really dark out. Alright. Yes, today. I decided it might be fun to get up and... Ugh. Check out the Pokemon Presents that they're that they announced a few days ago, and also give our two cents on it. Currently, it's about ten minutes away, so right now we're just gonna go over what we currently know about Scarlet and Violet before we head into the new one. Yeah, let's minimize that. Okay. And of course, because I am not being I am not playing a game right now. I figured I could change things up a fair bit to make things a bit more interesting. And I landed on this. Whew, look at that. Yeah. Uh not too spectacular. And then again I didn't I did kind of rush it together because as usual, I lost track of time. Uh what else is new here? Uh but yes, we have currently We've done a few things. Number one, we have our little avatar here, uh, though it's not really too special, so... Yeah, nothing to write home about, but I figured, you know what, why not? Let's have something there, and then we have the little... S we have this thing right here to track every time I speak. I figured it'd be a nice little change of pace. As opposed to... Whew, just me talking at nothing. Normally I have other things to fill up the space, but... Not right now. But, yeah, there we go. Uh, and then we got a nice little display capture right up there. Uh, pretty basic, couldn't really come up with an overlay for it, but that's what we got. But, yes, we're back. Whew. For those of you who don't know me, it is, like, I don't think too special, just a, a hyper small streamer who is attempting to get to affiliate, uh, but... One thing is for sure, I am a large fan of Pokemon. I have been playing the games for quite a long time, and I've done my best to take in as much information as I can about the series. So, or at least the main series. I know a ton of spin-off games I just haven't paid attention to. But yes, so today. Uh, I do have some hopes coming from the Pokemon Presents, mainly from Scarlet and Violet, because... Uh, surprise, surprise, I do have a lot of uh, hope going into these games. Uh, the last few games, they've been pretty fun. I've been big fans of the 7th generation, the 8th generation especially. Uh, for those of you who've been here before, it is one of my favorite games. Uh, Gen 8 for me is probably tied with Generation... Uh, I just one sec here, let me... Yeah, let's just do this for right now. Yeah, just to take up the space for right now. But yes, Generation 8 was one of my favorite generations. It's currently tied for my favorite with uh, Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver for my favorite game from the Pokemon series. And going into Scarlet and Violet, I do have high hopes, because Legends Arceus didn't really hit for me. Uh, it could have just been me, it was probably just, uh, you know, didn't click with me properly. But for whatever reason, I just didn't like Pokemon Legends. Uh, I couldn't really get past the tutorials, they just took way too long. And so I have a lot more faith going into this one, especially because before, Legends Arceus, everyone kept on saying, oh yeah, it's an open world Pokemon game, when it honestly wasn't like i think it was game freak themselves avoided constantly saying it's open world and then they eventually admitted yeah this isn't open open world there are like open areas but it's not open world they did give a lot of good motion options though 
the diving, the uh, directly going into Pokemon battles things, that was really good. I am a fan of some things, I am just not a fan of the overall game. I just couldn't get through it. Maybe I'll do it at another point, maybe for a stream to push myself through it. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that could be good, just like streaming the thing to push myself through the game. Yeah, I'll probably do that. But yes, so far, I do have hopes going into this Pokemon Presents. As of right now, I mainly have some hopes and some things I think need to be done. The main things I think need to be done are show off the map, and I guess, yeah, it's kind of a twofer. Show off the map and the region name, because a lot of people, because we don't know what the region's currently called. We've just been calling it Generation 9, so... <sighs> so I figure giving the region, like, a proper name, I think that'll work pretty well for it. And showing off the map is going to be pretty important so we can get a sense of how it's formatted. Uh, I do hope that for this specific game, it's not formatted like uh, Sword and Shield, where it's just basically funneling you one way. That works for Sword and Shield, I don't want it to be the case for this game. Huh. Uh, there are some hopes I have, though. Some big hopes I have for them to announce here and that is number one uh they announced that you're allowed to take on the gyms in any order you would like uh because as you remember in pokemon origins for example they had brock show up and he said oh you have no poke you have no badges all right i'll fight you with these things which did work for explaining the world of pokemon back then but given the fact that they're saying this is an open world game uh, and they've actually said it's going to be a big open game. I do think that... Yeah, I do think you should be able to take on any gym in any order you want. And unlike Sword and Shield, you should be allowed to fight the big Pokemon that are like 10 times your level. Or no, not. They're like 10 levels over you. And if you could beat them, you should be allowed to catch them. It shouldn't say like, oh no, it's a powerful Pokemon, you're not allowed to catch it. And then if you beat it, you should also be allowed to get a ton of experience from it. I think that would work really well. Um, yeah, I don't really think they need to implement some things. Like, I thought before th that they needed to introduce a new evolution because they started displaying, like, Eevee turning into Espeon, then Eevee turning into Umbreon on the Instagram account they have. But as I went back, I realized, no, they just did, uh, they just did Umbreon and Espeon, so it's probably not an evolution. I think it would be fun. I think there is still stuff you could do with Eevee, but they've also come up with a ton of Eevee merch that just uh, will kind of get devalued once a new Eeveelution is announced. Like a ton of a anniversary stuff, so I get not making a new Eeveelution at this point, I guess. Bit of a bummer, especially because they just got into using them more. Like, uh, if you followed the Journey to Gen 9, my little thing we're doing, where we go through one game of each Pokemon generation... Uh, you would know that we actually used an Eevee. Uh, f uh, we used it in Gen 1, and we had turned it into a Vaporeon because we already had an electric type. Which was a bit odd for me because I mainly just used Jolteon. Jolteon, I feel, is really, really nice. I am a big fan of Jolteon. It's the main one I go for. Mainly because, yes, it is the fast one. And that is mainly what I look for in some of my favorites. Um... But yeah, yeah, I was a big fan of Jolteon, but getting to use Vaporeon was pretty fun. Uh, it took a lot more hits than I expected and did some good damage. Not the quickest thing in the world, it took a fair number of hits itself, but it was good. A more than worthy addition to the team, and I would like to use more evolutions going forward. Uh, but I don't think I'll do it for the Drain to Gen 9 because... Uh, I gotta stop snapping. Uh, because uh, I don't tend to like to use the same Pokemon over and over again. So I figured giving someone else a break will be more than worth it. Like not using another evolution to let other Pokemon get a chance. I think it would be good. Alright, we are about 60 seconds away from the Presents, but yeah, that is what I'm mainly looking for going into the Presents. 
We already know the Pokemon that are currently available. We got Sprigatito, Foycoco, Quaxley, Koraidon, Miraidon, Palmy, Lechonk, and Smallive. Those are the main things we know going in. There's no way they're not showing more Pokemon. I do wonder what else they're going to show, though. Let's try to loop that. Alright, yeah, it's going to begin shortly. So yeah, we're already starting off. I do have high hopes for it. I do... I do hope for a decent amount of new Pokemon. And I, but I am not entirely sure. My bet is maybe three or at most five. I don't think they're going to show more than that. Like, maybe in the background, but like they're going to focus in and show maybe five. Uh... Or my bet is three, but I would be happy if with five. I think that'd be a good amount to show off. And maybe, like, the newest feature of the game. Like, maybe this is where they show off Dynamax or uh, Mega Evolution or Z-Move. Like, their big thing that separates the region from the others. Which does make me think. Because I've heard people say it's going to be this crystallization thing. That gives them the stab benefit to other moves they have. Uh, but it does make me question how it would work. Uh, but yeah, mainly we are going to be discussing what we see in the trailer and also just reacting to it, so we're going to figure it out from there. Let me just hide this, just because... Just in the case you want to avoid spoilers. Okay. So far, so good. Ooh, let's, uh... Off and pump that up. There we go. Okay, yeah, looks like we're caught up. <sighs> Alright, we're mainly going to let it play out and then talk about it as it goes on. We will interject more often, like, later on. Whew. Yeah, so that's what we want to see. We want the map and the region, and then... We do want to see that we could take on the gyms in any order we like. That is the main thing I'm looking for. That would make it perfect. Just, you could take on the gyms in any order you want for Scarlet, and whatever else is just going to be icing on the cake. I do have hopes for... Like, nothing new for Pokemon Unite, because that's already doing its things. Alright, let's see. Hello, everyone. I'm Utsunomiya from the Pokemon Company. I gotta figure out the Pokemon Company Today's people Pokemon to, we will be to remember them. On several of our games, including the Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet games. Hey, they know what we're here for, so that's good. <laughs> but before that... Happy to share hmm. some news about the Pokemon World Championships. Is that really the quality? London, UK, I guess. This year, from August 18th to August 21st. Yeah, that's what we do like to hear about. Please have a look at this video. We always like to hear about good competition. Hello, Pokemon trainers. I'm Chris Brown from the Pokemon Company International. Completely I'm new face to me. To share with you updates on our annual Pokemon World Championships. After three years, our global community will come together August 18th to 21st in London for not only intense Pokemon battles, but also to be together, celebrating old friendships and creating new ones. Well, that's nice. In the spirit of friendly competition. We are expecting thousands of Oh, and some 3DS players. That's nice. That other generations are being shown off, not just the Switch. Game and Pokemon Tournament Deluxe events. Many oh yeah, I completely forgot Pokemon Tournament was a thing. Invitation over several years, and we are thrilled to learn who will earn the title of World Champion in 2022. Well, that looks this nice. Year, we very, very nice. Many new elements to the show, beginning with two new Pokemon titles. Please hmm. join me in welcoming Pokemon Go, where nearly 100 players will compete across two ages. Really, a Pokemon Go Pokemon battle? Unite, where and yeah, Pokemon Unite, that's obvious. These players have battled all year for their shot to earn the title of the very... Yeah, I haven't played Pokemon Go in forever. I do wonder how, like, a competitive Pokemon a Go tournament would play. Attending in person. But I will definitely check Pokemon into like World Pokemon Unite Pokemon stuff because that's going to be really, really fun. I've really gotten back into it. You can follow all the action from wherever you are on our dedicated live streams for each product, including coverage of every championship match for each age division. 
Pokemon tournaments are held around the world, and we hope the competition at the World Championships inspire many new players to make new friends through battle. And one more thing, it's my honor to unveil for fans today our new Pokemon World Championships Pikachu trophy. Take a look. Mm, the ear looked a bit off from what I saw in the silhouette. Might have just been me. I'll have to go back and look at that to see what it was. Good seeing you in London, and now I would like to hand it back to Mr. Utsu Nomiya. Well, that's fun. You always like to hear more about the championship stuff, Thank you very even much, if you don't Mr. participate. With the Pokemon World Championships returning after three years, please look forward to exciting battles to keep you on the edge of your seats. Yeah, I got, also got to look into like competitive Pokemon no, stuff because I, like I do want to get into that. Yeah, but there's no way they're showing off Pokemon Sleep. That's just dead. There's no way they're showing that off. Pokemon Go Fest events in Berlin and Seattle, and this weekend we will be holding an event in Sapporo, Japan. Mysterious creatures known as Ultra Beasts have appeared at each event. And They're already up to Ultra Beasts? Last time I played this, they were just getting into Johto, so... Yeah, they've been going quick. The finale is a global event that can be enjoyed by trainers wherever they are in the world. Trainers will be able yeah, I don't know what's up, the quality Pokemon does not look 1080p. In the wild. They can also encounter the mythical Pokemon Shaman by completing special research. Will you be able to help re-contend with the Ultra Beasts? And what has become of Professor Willow, who was sucked into Ultra Space through an Ultra Wormhole? Stay tuned for the story's conclusion. Hmm. Oh, so they're concluding the story. So it's been going on for a minute. Okay, I guess. Uh, has been added to the game. It's a special hmm? incense that can be used once a day and lasts for 15 minutes. It can attract Pokemon not normally seen in your area. And rumors say it might even attract legendary Pokemon. No, oh, well that's good. Uh, make it easier to get legendary Pokemon and Pokemon you can't normally get. Wow, yeah, they already have Galar Pokemon. Look at that Slowpoke and the Zacian. Oh, and Asui and stuff. They have the Voltorb, but I guess Voltorb would make sense because they had because they had a uh, Gen One Pokemon. Hmm. Okay. Alright, so yeah, they are showing a bit of Pokemon Unite. Pokemon Unite, the hot app for Nintendo Switch and mobile devices. Yep, the anniversary happened. Pokemon Unite has continued to grow and evolve since its release one year ago. In celebration of its first day... Yeah, I'm glad I got back in with the anniversary is fun. ...new Pokemon and features to the game, but also many events and campaigns. A new type of quick battle, Pika Party, will begin oh, what is this? August 3rd. In this special type of quick battle in celebration well, you can only use Pikachu? Anniversary, all I guess so. On the field, both wild and players, are Pikachu. <laughs> we hope you join in the festivities. Alright, that's cute. That, uh... Oh, and they're a surfing Buzz Pikachu. Be joining Unite Battles starting today. Yeah, this I knew about. Buzzwall will be joining it. why... This is the main thing I thought they would include in Pokemon U if they did talk about Pokemon Unite. Buzzwall's ability, Beast Boost, which temporarily increases Buzzwall's movement speed and basic attack speed each time it knocks out an opposing Pokemon. Well, that is pretty much how it worked in uh, Generation 7, so yeah. I think good, ad good adaptation of the move. events for September as well, so please stay tuned. Oh, that's some nice art. Unite licenses in Hollowware for Pikachu... Lucario, Blastoise, Snorlax, and Sol I already got these things. They were part of the celebration. Yeah, I still like the Lucario one. It's basic, but eh, I don't know. I like the coat. Is it more Hisui stuff? Oh no, it's red. What is this? Are they redoing Generation 2 with Let's Go? No, this is Masters. A eh, bit of a bummer, but eh, okay. Hey. Mm hmm. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, 
Uh, new content, the Trainer Lodge. What is this? Okay, I mean, red's the most interesting thing there with his Pikachu. It's back? Looks like Mewtwo's back oh yeah, Cafe Remix. Game, and it's hungry. Make delicious drinks and dishes with your cafe staff to treat Mewtwo to a wonderful time. Once you make a lot of delicious drinks and dishes... Uh, it looks cute, but it just wasn't my type of thing. It can join your staff. I just never really got into it. I did try Masters a little bit, but I it never really got into the mobile the games. Cooking puzzle mode to satisfy Mewtwo. Tip one, gather great staff. Well, yeah, that just sounds good plates. in general. So gather staff that specialize in small plates. Pikachu. Oh yeah, that makes more sense. Five star chef Victini and the newly arrived Latias are good at those orders. Hmm. If you want to aim for the high score, try raising your Pokemon staff level. Go to the Pokemon menu to start raising their. Yeah, I got like no interest in this game, but it looks cute. To the challenge, it's time to begin one. So glad for people who did like it. On to the second tip. Just keep on mixing as much as you can. Once you begin one minute cooking, keep on mixing the Pokemon to rack up those combos. Use these tips to make delicious drinks and dishes. I will at least look up the dishes because the dishes look nice. Uh, I'll see how they look. Because the Latios will also appear in the future. Wait, there's even more. We have a special campaign. Weird cut. Starting today. Weird cut with the audio. Your chance to get Victini and Latios on your staff. Pokemon Cafe Remix is available at no cost. Uh, Charizard, please be nice to Sobble. Come on, come on. We appreciate Sobble here. Don't be mean to him. Okay, they're doing the costumes now. Ah, oh, people are so mad that Sprig is currently bipedal right now. Next up, an you can tell people are mad and worried. Alright, what's up? Is it a new trailer? Okay, here's what we got. Alright, we didn't see Arcanine and Growlithe before. We didn't see these guys. That is a weird looking whooper. It's brown. Is that new whooper or is that just because they're covered in mud? I'd be that'd be fun if they were like covered in mud. Attention please. Today we begin the treasure hunt. They're bikes, yeah, they're bikes. They are so bikes. Oh yeah, they're bikes. Get to know the region. <laughs> okay, yeah. Alright, Go Goats, uh, Dreadnaws, Q Fans. The weird looking Sunflora. Okay, that was a new one. So that's one new one. No, that person in the back looked weird. I saw the bit of stutter. Where will you go? That is to be expected, though. Okay. Who will you meet? What will you achieve? All right, that's two. The character designs look really nice. I will say. What is what is that? <laughs> will be your Pokemon. We're taking Sprigatito. Journey. They're bringing back the Rotom phone, so that's nice. Evolution looks nice, I will say. Oh, I think that was... No, I don't think that was one more. I got distracted by the... Uh... Oh yeah, this is the thing. So yeah, it is crystallization. That is the new thing. They're bringing back raids? You know, raids did work out pretty well, so I guess it works. The treasure hunt, what does that mean? 
All right, so just from what I could see, that's two new Pokemon. To get a picture of your adventures to come in the Paldea region. Oh, Paldea, okay. So, like so region name, good. The information presented. That's so one. Can we get the map? Together, shall we? Can we get the map? The newest titles in the Pokemon series are the Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet games. These titles will be open world RPGs. A first for the Pokemon. Unless they already announced the thing and I've just been stupid the last Crawling couple streams. Landscapes and vibrant towns weave together to form the Paldea region, where your new adventure will There's unfold. no way they actually called it the Paldea region before. These are the legendary Pokemon, Coridon and Miraidon. You'll rely on one of them as a partner in your adventure. Climb on. For how long? How long do you get to use this thing? Across grassy field. Move across water. And glide through the sky. Hmm. Yeah, I still don't like it being Your a tech thing. Change forms as needed while you explore every nook and cranny of the region with them. You will be enrolling at a certain academy as a student. Hmm. And a special independent study project awaits you. The treasure yeah, I guess hunt. someone Early. called it Paldea like a few days ago. There might have been a leak, but... Three yeah, they're saying it a lot, like this is the first time, so my bet is this is the first time we're officially hearing it. The familiar gym battles. You'll go At least I didn't hear it before. And aim for the I didn't get to see a turn a corner, I want to see how they turn. These games, Currently they've just been no going straight for a while. Take when challenging the gyms. That, that's Start it, that's it. That's what we like to hear, you can take on the gyms in any order you want. But are they, do they scale? Because scaling is the, the big thing. You'll experience hold many surprises and discoveries as well. That's the big thing we want to know. Can you take on the gyms with? and they scale? Like they're, they're, some are strong, some are you. weak. Yeah, you can take on the gym in any order you want. That, that's good. Very, very good. Professor Sada and Professor Churro, research legends passed on in the Paldea Why does it sound region? like Churro? Mr. <laughs> is the director of the academy you'll attend. And Mr. Jacques is your homeroom teacher who teaches biology. All right, one of these guys is the villain. You'll have your battle That's my bet. friend, Nimona. Hey, we like battles too. And not a problem Arvin, there. An upperclassman and a great cook. Yeah, There's I'm not bold Penny, enough to say he's the villain. Student in your grade. There are gym leaders too, like Grusha, the ice type gym leader. The people you meet in Paldea are sure to enrich your adventures. Hmm. All right. So so far, we saw Many two new Pokemon. Of Pokemon also called the Paldea region home. This Pokemon is the Paldean regional form of. Wooper. It is a new Wooper. Okay, yeah. It lives on the land and covers its body with a poisonous film. So, yeah, it is a new Wooper. Okay. Bido are delightfully squishy Pokemon. That just looks like Yamper. And here's Cititan, which has a large body and. All right. So it was three that we saw. Its surroundings. Of course, we also have the Pokemon from which you'll choose your first partner. Sprigatito, Coco, and Quaxly. Alright, that burned the fruit quick. Enjoy needing lots of Pokemon. And complete your Pokedex. Alright, so the Wooper was new. I'm glad we noticed that. Now that just looked like Ice Cube. Wait, what? <laughs> you have your own little book for each Pokemon? By using the Union Circle. You can enjoy co-op play with up to three friends. You can go look for Pokemon you haven't yet discovered. Or even ride together to race across the map. Can you find Pokemon from cross enjoy games, though? Enjoy all the Paldea region has to offer with family and friends. How does that going to factor in? Like finding new Pokemon. Terrasalize? The terrestrial phenomenon terrestrial. makes Pokemon shine like gems. As usual, I can't read. <laughs> Alright, what do they do to Sprig? Give him a little flower on top of his head? So is this the stab to everything? Because that's what I heard people were saying it was going to be. How does it affect, like, their All stats? All Pokemon in the Paldea region are able to terrestrialize, which can provide a boost to a Pokemon's type and make its moves stronger. So it just boosts their Some type. Some Pokemon will change type when they terrestrialize. Change type. So yeah, this is what I'm talking about. What type they become seems to depend on that Pokemon's Terra type. It is. Some of them get the new stat. 
or the new type to boost their stab. For example, an EV would typically remain normal type after terastalizing, but there could be mm -hmm. EV that become grass or water type after terastalizing. Hmm. We hope you'll try to catch Pokemon with rare Terra types. Yeah, that is going to take a long time for us when it comes to trying to build a competitive Mons. Pokemon that have rare Terra types are more likely to appear in Terra raid battles. Yeah, it is raids. You like, I'm glad to see him bring it back. In these battles with up to three other trainers. But Terra Pokemon don't seem as intimidating as... Kind of raid yeah, they don't, they're not as intimidating as Gigantamax Mons. To wait for your allies. Try to cooperate with your allies to get the oh, and everyone can do it. Yeah, that's nowhere near as intimidating. After you successfully defeat a Terra Pokemon, you'll get the opportunity to catch it for yourself. I, I really can't wait till you can change the uh, the look of your trainer. I'm just not a fan of the hat and the overalls. Or no, suspenders, I think. We've kept all the things you love about Pokemon while evolving the adventure you can have in Pokemon oh yeah, that was Scarlet and Pokemon Even Violet. the beanie looks better. We hope you look forward to the day you set out on your adventure. Ugh. The Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet games are available to pre-order at participating retailers. All right, yeah, we can pre-order now. Gotcha. Your independent study in the no, a special Pikachu. Yeah. yeah, we'll probably pick it up. We eagerly await your enrollment. Enrollment, so it's like a That's school, a like a presentation. like Ultra Sun and Moon. Thank you very much for tuning in and watching. Yeah, let's see, just to be sure there's nothing at the end. No, that's it. Okay. So, what did we... So, we already saw everything. What are the big standout things? Number one, we didn't get the map. That is a bit of a bummer. Uh, I really wish we got the map. Getting... Okay, now it's looking way cleaner. Yeah, it already looks... It already looks sharper, as opposed to before. Okay. So, going back in, looking through... What are some of the big things? Yeah, number one, we didn't get the map. We did get to see what the big new thing is, so that's good. That is really good. So the big new thing is terrestrializing, where it affects Pokemon's typing. My question is, does that take away their old typing? Like, for example, the Drift Blim. The Drift Blim... Drift Blim is ghost, fi ghost flying type. How does it affect it to become fire type? Which stack gets removed or does it just get added on? Uh, how does that work? That is my question. It is going to be interesting seeing the types change. So like you're never going to know exactly what your opponent has. And you're going to have to find a way to build around each of the things. If the terrestrializings become... If some terrestrializing becomes better than other ones. Uh, but yeah, we didn't get the map, so that is a bit of a bummer. I guess that is kind of a big thing they are holding off on. We did get the confirmation that you can take on the gyms in any order you want, so that's good. Uh, but that was kind of required because they haven't saying this is actually an open world game as opposed to Pokemon Legends. Yeah, I, I just didn't like Legends. It, it didn't work for me as an open world game because I was more used to... Uh, playing Breath of the Wild and seeing that as open world, and it just felt way too restrictive. Uh, not not even from like a visual standpoint. I was fine with the visuals of Legends. It's just it didn't work. But yeah, where was that thing that I noticed? Uh, I noticed the game looked a bit stuttery. Uh, I also noticed it with Lechonk. Let's uh, what was that? Yeah, what was that? Let. Like focus on like one sec, let me I could just be seeing things, but let's hit capture cursor. Yeah, look at like this kid specifically. This kid looked a bit weird when like you snap in. Yeah, 
Yeah, what was that? That was, uh... To me, it's looking like they're snapping in. I could be just be seeing things, but that looks a bit weird to me. Okay. Now, where was the thing that looked really weird to me? The person who was in the... Who was more in the background, but they did look a bit weird. Oh, also... Also, this guy's hands. They're looking... Little outline they're giving his hands. Like, it's... It's kind of fady, but it looks kind of off. Hmm. That is probably because the letters look way sharper. The letters are, like, put on there, so it's definitely sharper, but it looks like he has a weird, like, a glow to him. I don't know how to feel about that. Oh, yeah, what was the thing that I didn't see before? The Pokemon I didn't see right here. I think it's Girafferig. Yeah, yeah, it's just giraffe rig. Yeah, I don't know how to feel about it being a bike, and how are they a legendary Pokemon if that's the case? Like, when do you get them? And how do they impact the story? Yeah, that is the big question for me. How does a Pokemon game that is now fully open world, how does that handle story? Is the story now based on the number of badges you do have. Like, uh, you get a certain amount of badges and then a story thing happens. Or can you trigger the story in any way you want? That would be my preferred method, but it does make me question. Because, uh... They're constantly talking about how the Legendary is going to be your partner, and they're showing it pretty early. They're showing off the Legendary being your partner pretty early. Uh, just one sec. Yeah, if the Legendary is your partner pretty early on, how does that impact the story? And how do you even become qualified to have the Legendary, as opposed to, like, someone else, like your upperclassman they showed off? Uh, being that it is the, po the world of Pokemon, I assume they do give some explanation, like, uh... Because it is typical that the young, new starters are usually the ones who do pretty well. Like Sword and Shield, there are people who are way higher than us, but we still just beat them all. Uh, but what is it that makes us specifically qualified to take these legendary Pokemon as, like, a new trainer? Uh, we will see. Yeah, alright, let's find that thing. That, uh, that little spot with the person. Because how far away were they from Focus? It was right around here. No. Hmm. But yeah, this thing... Uh... Yeah, this thing. The new dog. It just looks like Yamper. It's like, they made Yamper. It was really cute. Everyone loved him. Then they released Boltund. And then people were kind of off. And people didn't... People weren't the biggest... I think that's not a controversial thing to say. People were not as big fans of Boltund as they were of Yamper. And not as many people were fans in general. Uh, so it looks like they're trying Yamper round two. Like, same colors and everything. Eh. I don't think I like it as much as Yamper. It's fluffy and stuff, but... Eh. I don't know. Yamper seemed a bit better. And it just seems like they're trying Yamper two. Th this, like around here. Like, how far away are they from focus? Not really, and the all and this, uh, the swab blue is already kind of going off. Like, that's not too far away from these people who are in focus. And if that's the draw distance between you and everything else, how is that gonna look when you're playing? Because you go in the big open world, it's going to look big, and there's going to be stuff everywhere. It could be that this was the same case in Sword and Shield, but I'm not entirely sold. Because that is really close to where you are. That's, like, not far whatsoever. It was, if it was further back here, I could get that. But from the look of it, like the shadow here thing right here, it looks really close. Like, really, really close. And that makes me worry how it's going to look. Because in Pokemon Legends, that was another thing that just completely turned me off from the game. When the trailers came out, 
and they showed that chingling that was like really really close to you and it was stuttering moving like a frame a second i that chingling just really soured my thoughts on the game but i figured you know what it's just a chingling it was early on i'll give them a chance because i'm always going to give them a chance uh i'm going to determine it the day like when the game actually comes out and when the game came out it still didn't fill me with confidence. I still got the game to give it a shot. And overall, I do regret it. Because I didn't finish the game, but I probably will at this point for the channel. Uh, definitely not before we do play Scarlet, though. I'll see how it compares. But yeah, that that is making me worry. Wait, what is this? What is this? They got a little shop with sandwiches? Oh, wait, wait, look. I also just saw the Pachirisu. Let me look at the Pachirisu really quick. Pachirisu's even looking a bit weird. Its tail animation doesn't look the smoothest. Yeah, like, the Pikachu look really smooth. Yeah, Pikachu Fletchling. Yeah, yeah, they look really smooth. What's going on with Pachirisu? Let me look at the kids really quick. Let me focus in on the kids. Like, because the kids are moving. How do they move? Compared to Pachirisu. Okay, the kids are moving smoothly. Pachirisu's looking weird. And the people in the background over here are also looking weird. What is up with Pachirisu here? Hmm. Alright, just as one more thing. I'm going to look at this guy right here. I want to see how he's moving. Okay. He's moving okay. So it could be that they're... That these kids, they're actually further away than it looks. Because my bet is, it is not your trainer is, like, right here. It's probably that your trainer isn't here, and they're, like, using a camera that's, like, in the world of the game. Your trainer is actually further back. That's my bet, is that your trainer is actually further away, and that the Pokemon animation on Pachirisu just looks a bit off because it is further away. And then it looks really off on the trainers and Swablu, because they're even further away. So yeah, they look further. Yeah, my assumption was that your trainer was like right here behind these kids. And you were like listening to what this person was saying. Which is what made me really worry about this. But if they're further away than I think. And Pachiris is also a bit further away. That makes me think. Because the kid and this adult. They look really smooth. So how does that work? Hmm. Oh yeah, it's a sandwich shop. That's a nice looking sandwich. But what can you buy from there? Hmm, yeah, his, his fady hands are still looking weird to me. And this thing. Is is that a new move? Is that a new move? Uh, let's look at that really quick. It looks like... Hmm. Given that it's a snow person, and that it's an ice type, and the overall look, you could easily assume that's ice, like ice crunch or something, or ice fang. And I understand that too, but it has bubbles to it. It doesn't have, and also it's fighting a, it's fighting a talon flame. So I don't think that's Ice Fang. My bet is that's a new water bite move. Maybe it's just the fact that it's biting that makes it look like that. But my, hmm, they could be introducing something like a water type bite move. Do they already have like a water fang or something? Let me look that up really quick. You yeah, know, they have Ice Fang, they don't have something like a Water Fang or a Water Bite, something like that. Yeah, it could easily just be the fact that that Pokemon. Because the Pokemon animations are set for pretty much everything. So even though that's biting, it could just be like a like a watery punch move. 
like some type of water punch and then repeated punches. But that looks like an aqua fang or something. Hmm. Yeah, I do wonder what this thing is. This is obviously meant to be the big mystery thing because it's driving on its own. Oh yeah, Sprigatito. That that was also looking a bit weird to me. Focus right here on Sprigatito. He's looking. Sprig isn't looking the best. It's decently smooth, but it just has that tiny thing that looks a bit off. Foycoco looking way better, and so is Quaxley. So it is just Sprigatito is looking a bit off. It could just be a me thing. It could be that I'm really tired, but Sprigatito looks a tiny bit off. Hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Let's look at that. What is the Pokemon they caught? Is that something else? Or is that just the dog? Yeah, it's just the dog. It's just the dog. Okay. Evolution looks nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me look at the other trading sequence. No, no, That was the trading sequence we missed. So, yeah, it's just Ice Q and Stone Jorner. Yeah, Ice Q is the one I missed. Hmm. The Pokeballs are transparent. Kind of like, uh... Kind of like Pokemon uh, Adventures. I didn't even think about that. The Pokeballs, as they're showing here for the terrestrialization, I think that's what they call it, they're, they're clear at the top. Is that for Pokeballs? No, we've seen Pokeballs at this point. They're still the sealed top. But what is about terrestrialization that turns them clear? Hmm. Okay, so already we saw Drifblim. Drifblim already had the... Yeah, Drifblim is already a flying type, but it got the flying type things. It got the balloons. So how does... How does terrestrialization affect them getting a type versus them already having a type? Because from what I understand, people were speculating before, because the whole crystallization thing. Like, that's what people were calling it. The assumption was they basically gain a new type. But my question is, how does it affect Pokemon if they already have the type? Like they said, Eevee is going to get... Like, Eevee would normally just get normal typing. But now it has the chance to get water and grass typing. Like, I guess to buff up those moves. How does a Pokemon already having its type affect Terrestrialization? Does it just give them, like, an amp, like a like Torrent or... Overgrow would do? Hmm. Like, because of Dragonite. Dragonite right here, it has the fire typing. So my assumption is that boosts its fire type moves. But what does it mean if Dragonite has, for example, a dragon type terrestrialization? Does it just boost its dragon moves even more? Because that might be the way to go, as opposed to more coverage is more damage dealing. Then again, if it's already strong, you might not need the added bump, and it could just be, uh, it could not be needed. But yeah, my question is immediately, like, my biggest question coming out of this is how does terrestrialization affect Pokemon that already have the same type? Is it purely something like Torrent or Overgrow or Blaze, where it's just like a, bu it's just a buff without needing to drop your health? Because I'm already thinking, like, uh, yeah, because before, when I had Inteleon on my team, the whole point was I gave him a berry that boosted his special attack stat, I gave him Endure, and he would basically drop to 1 HP to trigger Torrent. So he would trigger Torrent, he'd get the berry, and then I'd just pretty much tear through them with a really powerful water stab user. So would Terrestrialization further boost that Inteleon, or what would it do to his water typing? That is the big question. How does same type terrestrialization affect them? 
Because currently I'm thinking, as it is right now, uh, Dragonite just gets boosted power on his stab moves. But what does it do for types that already they already have? Yeah, the animation there does look really nice, I will say. Let the treasure hunt begin. They keep on calling it the treasure hunt. What does that mean? Mm. The outline on the hat is also not... It's looking a bit off to me. And the hair, too. But the hair... I can excuse the hair. The hair is because... The character designs are meant to work with pretty much everything of, like, every single fashion choice you can make. So the hair, I can forgive. The hat, yeah, the hair on the hat, I can forgive because it's meant to work with every single character. It's the same reason with the sports mates. Uh, and the Miis. The Miis weren't designed to work with every item in Nintendo Switch Sports like the sports mates were. The sportsmates were designed to work with the outfits, and then they added in Miis later. So the Miis, they don't often match with the different hair things. So I can I can understand this, this little part right here. Even though it does look a tad off, like, like her hair is going into her hat, I do fully get that because it is the, uh... Oh, dang it, lost train of thought. It is the model having to match up with every single outfit. I do get that. One sec, let's, look, let's get a look at these other Treasure teachers, hunt. I think. Oh yeah, so we know this person. She's the one with like a scar on her forehead. Who are these people? There's no way they're the first few gym leaders. There's no way they say, oh uh, yeah, you could take it on any order you want, and then the first few gym leaders are just here. Unless it's like Sword and Shield, where it is, it, this is just like the big announcement for everything. Hmm. It's just the big opening ceremony, and then you go off and do your thing. I will say, off the bat, I still prefer the premise of Sword and Shield. Sword and Shield's whole thing is that it is the... Like, Pokemon is now a big professional sport, and you pretty much go out there to try and... Yeah, basically, Pokemon is a big professional sport, and it's you going out there into the region to become the best. That's what the big opening ceremony was about. I really like that. I do have a soft spot for whole competitive things, and Sword and Shield did that perfectly for me. I really like the whole atmosphere of Galar and how yeah, the atmosphere of Galar was really nice. I liked that it was basically everyone wants to become the best. Uh, Marnie's whole reason for going through it is because she believes that with the fame of becoming the champion, she can bring a lot of stuff back to Spike Mouth. Uh, Hop wants to do it because he wants to live up to his brother. You want to do it just because you're a trainer in the region and you want to be the best. Like Gen 8, they pushed competitive way more than any other game they've done before. And I think that really helped. I really liked the feeling of competitiveness in Sword and Shield. Even if the trainers didn't put up as much of a fight, which because obviously it's still a Pokemon game, I did really like it. Like Leon had a really good, like, uh, like, good final team. It was easy for me because I accidentally overleveled my Inteleon, but people have said, people have said Leon does still have a good team for the final fight. Like, for example, Charizard giving it Solar Beam, that was perfect. That was really smart on his part. Uh, let me think, what else? Oh, right, yeah, but this, what, this place, it's just not giving me the same vibe. They're saying, let the treasure hunt begin. That does make me think that the Pokemon League isn't the main focus. Uh, which Galar, it didn't hit as much for people because the evil team, they also didn't factor in too much. Like Team Macrocosmos, they just came in at the tail end. Mm. Yeah, as of right now, it is making me worry. Because as of right now, it does make me wonder, how is the story going to factor into this? Like, how does story progression work here? Because Breath of the Wild, for example, their Nintendo's previous big open world game, or I guess the open world game that set the standard for open world games, and what I assume the bike is going to be based on and the gliding. The gliding looks a lot like the paraglider, and the bike looks a lot like the master cycle. 
or Master Cycle or the bike from Generation Eight, where you could basically walk go on water too. It does make me wonder. Like, because in Breath of the Wild, story progression was completely optional. You had no requirements to going to fight the final boss. In Pokemon, you obviously have to have requirements before fighting the final boss because it's a Pokemon game. You have to have some requirements before going to fight the big bad guy because... uh, Because it's a Pokemon game. You need to at least get all the gym badges to fight the Elite Four. That's my bet. You're not going to be able to just grind yourself up without fighting any gym badges like any gym battles and then you can just go fight the elite four there's no way they're going to turn you away and say no you got to go get those gym badges at the very least i highly doubt you will be allowed to just ignore that like breath of the wild did uh unless they don't because they said they have gym leaders so there is a gym system yeah there is a gym system it's not like uh at least what i know of legends arceus it there is a yeah, Legends Arceus. There is a gym system here, so you do have to get the badges. So that makes me wonder how that's going to factor into story progression. Uh, I think, what else? What else stood out to me? That is a, that is a, yeah, that, that did stand out to me. That's a weird tail bend for Luxray. Hmm. Yeah, what is the point of, like, Koraidon? What is the point of his wheels at the front right now? Because cause Miraidon, his whole point is that he uses the wheels to move. He doesn't really use his feet, and the feet are like jets. But what is the point of Koraidon having them? If he doesn't use the wheels, what are the, what are the wheels here for? Is it just to match with Miraidon? Like, they look similar, and they're meant to be, like, the two legendaries. But what is the point of his wheels? They just look weird. Like, what purpose do they serve him in the wild? These wheels actually move. He's just running. He's running with his feet and climbing with them. So what is this? Oh, wait, wait, wait. The map. I didn't even see it. Okay, so they didn't like show it off but there is the map let's see one two three four five six seven okay so yeah the gyms are here so there's just a big plot of open area here where they don't really tell you where you don't really seem to do much but yeah all so the gyms go boom and boom but dang yeah they actually do have the map here and don't think i didn't notice here you can customize this i did see before it was like a weird crystallized thing uh, it was like a weird uh, cube, not cube looking thing. What was it? It was like right around here when they were showing off the legendaries. Yeah, like look, no, 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 not that, not that. It was, it was back here. It was back wherever you see the legendaries in this thing. Hmm. Dang it, where is it? Yeah, this thing. This thing. Like, this isn't it. This is not the scene I was talking about, but you do get to see it. Yeah, look at that. That is different from what we just saw. Alright, but yeah, we do have the map. Uh, Yeah, we do have the map, even if they didn't, like, show it off in, like, a big thing to show what, what it's all about. We do have the map, though, so that's good. Yeah, Paldea. Uh, let's go back to look at the map. Wait, 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 let's also look at these things. Let's look at our trainer room before we leave. Hmm. So, yeah, Applin, Hatini... Or Hatena, that's Driftlim, or Drifloon. Uh, yeah, of course, there's our Switch. Yeah, Pikachu, Choodle, uh, Hopip. Uh, that's the news. Alright, but yeah, the map here is our 
biggest thing? Uh, that is not enough letters to spell Paldea. Then again, the Pokemon language is a bit different. Uh, but yeah, so that's our map. Obviously, the biggest question is, what is this thing over here? We have all this stuff that is the main area. What is this? Is that potential future Isle of Armor type stuff? Like, a new area to the map that they announce later as DLC. Because that makes me worry. Because this is meant to be open world area. Is that going to be a spot that we just can't reach? Hmm. I would almost like it if it was, like, cut off. So, like, they could even just argue, oh, yeah, it's ocean. You can't go that far out. Which would still be dumb because you could do that in, like, Breath of the Wild. But in Breath of the Wild, they just had it, like, uh, you just couldn't see anything else out there. Like, there wasn't just, like, a big island that you couldn't reach. You could at least go to Eventide Island. So, yeah, my biggest question leaving... So, yeah, all right. Uh, well, not my biggest question. Let's put a note in that. Let's put a note in the map is there, but there is a black area there. Let's take a look at that. Hmm. Wait, 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 let's... Oh, yeah, those... This kid over here, this kid is looking okay. Like, in terms of you running. The kid and his Pokemon, his little rock rough, they're looking all right. They're looking smooth. They're not, like, cutting in and out. Yeah, that's just Synesties and... All right, there's little Squovets back there. Wait, what was that? Was that just another Psyduck? No, that is Hariyama. Not Hariyama. Uh, Makuhita. Hmm. Okay. I do like the texture. The texture on the shirt looks nice. Uh, I am a big fan of that. This looks a bit smooth, but the texture on the shorts and the shirt is looking really nice. I am a fan of that. Hmm. Actually, yeah, that is another thing. Like here, they cut right before you see them turn. My question is, how do these things handle when it comes to not moving straight? Because they... Because you don't get to see them turn. That's the weirdest thing. You always, you only see the legendary Pokemon driving in a straight line or driving up a hill or something like that. You don't see them turn left or right. Which makes me question, how do they turn? Like, obviously it's just going to be very simple, but why didn't they show them turning at any point? Is it just for, like, effect? Because they cut right before you take a turn. Or no, was that him turning? Right up here. Uh, it looks like he started to turn, and he's just running straight. Glaciado Gym. All right, where is that one? Let's look at our map for reference. Where is that going to be? Let's look at our map for reference. Where is the ice gym going to be? Because that's what I assume that is. Like, they showed you running up to it. Where is the... Where's the ice gym? Alright, so it's probably one of these two. It's probably one of these two. If it is the dedicated ice gym, it's probably the one that's higher. Alright, so that's where that is. Hmm. Yeah, what are these things? That is obviously the big question. You, you were standing on top of one of them before, and now this one's stuck in the sand. What's that one about? Yeah, see, so you're on top of one. So why is that other one just, like, uh, knocked out? Hmm. All right, let's see. Uh... Professor Sada and Professor Turo 
research legends passed on in the Paldea region. Mr. Clavel is... Alright, yeah, they're, they're... I was thinking maybe their, like, backboards were different, but no, they're the same. They are the same. Let's tone this down just a little bit. The director of the academy you'll attend. Alright, so yeah. The whole thing is basically, it's changed from becoming the champion to basically going on a scavenger hunt and doing well in the school. I... I don't know if I like that. Um, at least compared to Sword and Shield. Which, is, which isn't fair. I should compare this game to itself. Yeah, this guy doesn't have the weird fade like he did before. He doesn't have the weird glow on like his, uh, his like sides or anything. So it was definitely because of the letters. Gotcha. But yeah, if it is just you attending an academy, that's... Eh. They had hints of that in Sun and Moon, and that's what Ash pretty much did for the entirety of the anime. But if this thing's just a treasure hunt, I don't know. I am interested in how the anime will adapt this. How is the anime going to adapt this? Because before it was just every region. So how are they going to justify just sticking to one region again? And Mr. Jacques is your homeroom teacher. Do you have to come back here often? That's the big question. How often do you have to come back to this place in an open world game? How often do you have to come back to the school? If it's like your homeroom and stuff. I assume you're just allowed out all the time to go on expeditions, but you have to come back with, like, a good amount of stuff. Hmm. Who teaches biology. You'll have your battle-loving friend, Nimona. And you'll meet Arvin, an upperclassman and a great cook. Hmm. So is it, like, in... Is it basically that whatever version you pick, that's the class you get put in, and then the other people are in a different class? Because there's no way it's just going to be everyone is orange, everyone's purple. It's going to be some people match up, and then some people are different based on the game you pick. There's also Penny, a shy student in your grade. There are gym leaders, too. Like Grusha, the ice-type gym leader. The people you meet in Paldea are sure to enrich your adventures. They didn't show off that one woman. The, uh... Let me look. How will you progress through them? It is all up to you. Oh, no. They didn't show off these two people. They showed off him, they showed off her, and the little roll call thing they had there. Who are these two people? Who are these two females here? What's up with them? Mr. Clavec is your of your back and upper in your grade. Gym leader. Yeah, who's this guy? We know sure she was shown off. We adventures. don't know this person. We don't know this person. Many different species of Pokémon also call the Paldea region. Oh, wait. I didn't Many I didn't notice that too much. Look at the texture on this guy. Dang, I think it's Pineco. Uh, Pineco into Fortress, I think. I think his name is Pineco. I'm actually going to look that up, just to be sure. I'm like 90% sure it's Pineco. Yeah, it's Pineco. Gotcha. You're never going to catch me slipping on those things. But yeah, the little patterns they have on him. I don't know how to feel about that. I like the fact that it's there. I like the little bits of texture. But does that match up with trees or pine cones in general? Because that just, it looks like, it kind of looks like rock as opposed to, yeah, well, I guess he does evolve into fortress, so I guess it makes sense. Like on the eyes too? Mm. Also called the Paldea I'm not sure how to feel about that. This Pokemon is the Paldean regional form of Wooper. Hmm. Yeah, I am glad I was right. That was actually a new whooper. Okay, that that perspective on the water looks a tad off. Uh, or not a tad off. It just looks different to me for some reason. And then the water fade here. Hmm. It lives on the land and covers its body with a poisonous film. Hmm. The big thing for me is so far I don't see what makes this whooper different. Obviously, it's like they cover themselves in a weird thing, and they're brown, and their tendrils are different. But I don't see a big personality shift. 
Because like with most other regional variants, you've seen a big change in personality. Like Gudra and Hisui and Gudra, they look way different. Uh, they're both like very sweet Pokemon, but like they look different. Uh, Alolan Meowth and Normal Meowth, they act way differently. Uh, Voltorb and Electrode are the biggest example. Same with uh. Or told about Hisuian, Zoroark, and normal Zoroark. Hmm. And I guess there are a few Pokemon that act the same, like uh Normal Ninetales and Hisui and, and Alolan Ninetales, they don't act too differently. But this just looks like different colored Rooper to me. I don't like I'm gonna see. What makes them different? What do they evolve into? That is gonna be the big question, actually. What does this thing evolve into? Is it gonna be a Paldean Quacksire, or will it be something new? That does make me wonder. Because right now, it looks like to have the same personality as Wooper. Fido are delightfully squishy Pokemon that are smooth to the touch. Yeah, Fido. They're basically like Doe. So, it's basically a Doe dog, but it does just look like they're trying to redo Yamper. Like, I wouldn't say that they're just trying to redo Yamper if it wasn't so apparent with the colors, the fact that it's a tiny dog, the fact that, that it's, like, really cute. And, like, thing around the neck. The thing around the neck is what pushes it over the edge for me. Uh, and, of course, the colors. But that that just makes me think Yamper. The main color that it doesn't have is, like, that the lighter parts are a bit of a darker color than opposed to Yamper's, like, normal white. And its eyes are a different color. But it just look To me, off the bat, it looks like they're trying to do Yamper 2.0. It is really small, though. Like, look at it compared to the grass. Our delightfully squishy Pokemon. These look a bit bigger, though. These ones look bigger. The other ones look like they're really, really small. So it's either it's bigger than average grass, or they're, or they're like small Fidos and big Fidos. That are smooth to the touch. And here's Satitan. Satitan, uh. I don't know about Titan. It doesn't look too big. To yeah, look at look at it compared to this thing. Bear Tick is bigger than this thing, so Bear Tick's bigger than this thing. It, it's not too much bigger than like a. Like right now, it looks like it could be worth three of these things, but put them next to it, and my bet is it's worth like two of them, maybe two and a half. So I don't know if you could call that Titan, like Satitan. It doesn't look massive. Here's Satitan, which has a large body and a hard horn that can freeze its surroundings. A a hard horn that can freeze its surroundings. It has three right here. So is it this horn that's the freezing one? Uh, then what do these ones do? What is why do you say one hard horn? Because you use horn as singular. So what do these other ones do? The ones on his back I can understand, but what are the ones in the front? What do they do differently? Of course, we also have the Pokemon from which you'll choose your first partner. Sprigatito. Coco. Yeah, look how quickly it burns that thing. That is like... Your first partner. That's fully burned. Sprigatito. Coco. That's That's quick. Uh, that's definitely done for effect, and I do like the little glow they have on here at the top of him. But yeah, that is that is a quick burn. Yeah, hats off to you, Foy Coco. And Quaxley. Yeah, I'm just not feeling Quaxley. Yeah, if whenever I do like other playthroughs of the game, my priority is definitely gonna go Sprigatito into Foy Coco into Quaxley. Currently, I am still sticking with Sprigatito. Uh, I really like it. Foy Coco is a very close second over time because it just it kind of grew on me how derpy it looks. Quaxley, I'm just not feeling as much. And then again, I don't normally pick water types. Uh, Sobble and a certain other Pokemon are the exceptions. But yeah, I've just never really felt water types. Quaxley isn't doing it for me. Enjoy meeting lots of Pokemon. And complete your Pokedex as part of your adventure. Yeah, it's the same ones as before, so nothing new there. Yeah, what does this mean? 
this is this is my big question. What does this mean? Is this how the Pokedex is broken up? Is it basically every time you catch a new Pokemon? Yeah, every time you catch a new Pokemon, you get a new book. Cause that seems a bit weird. And like the lines and the size of the book, they differentiate that. And then this is the this is another thing. So obviously this person picks Sprigatito. They have Sprigatito, they then catch Lechonk. There's gonna be stuff here. What is going on with Quaxley? Is it gonna be like hmm? Is it gonna be like Hal or Shauna in X and Y and then Sun and Moon? Where your rival picks the Pokemon weak to you? Because currently I'm thinking you fight uh who is it? Who is it? Uh, Nimona. My thought process is you fight Nimona as like your first big fight. Complete your Pokedex as part of your adventure. Actually, no, not Nimona. It's it can't be Nimona because when we saw in the first trailer, or the second trailer for the game. It showed her leading with Palmy. So you have to fight someone else who uses Quaxley. But your first big fight is going to be someone using the Pokemon weak to yours. Which does make me wonder. When do you fight Nimona then? Because currently it looks like you get your starter Pokemon. You fight your way through. Uh... Yeah, you get your starter Pokemon, you fight your way through whatever, you encounter someone with a Pokemon weak to you, you then get to run around a bit, I guess, and then I guess you fight Nimona with her Palmy? Because it would answer a lot of questions if Palmy was here. If Palmy was here, that would answer a bunch of my questions. But why is Quaxley here is the big question I have. It could be that her palm that you fight her Palmy later and like she catches it and whatever. But what is Quaxley doing here? Does she fight you for the first time using a Pokemon weak to you? That, that's gotten me thinking. I, I do want that answered. By using the Union Circle, you can enjoy co-op play with up to three friends. Yeah, this is also the question. This is the other question. How does it determine what Pokemon you're allowed to catch? Because there's definitely going to be regional differences. There's going to be different Pokemon you can catch based on the ver not regional version differences. There's some Pokemon you're going to be able to get in Scarlet that you can't get in Violet. They've done that with every single game. My question is, how does it determine who gets what? Is it going to be that if you come in from Violet, it's based on this guy? Because he's the one who brought everyone here. Everyone came to his game. So how does it determine? Is it they all get to get... If these are all Violet people... Do they get to catch his new Scarlet Pokemon? Assuming he's Scarlet, these guys... No, these are Violet, this guy's Scarlet. Assuming these two people are now Violet, do they get to catch Scarlet Pokemon? Or is it based on their game? Like, for example, let's say... Let's use an example. Let's say Hydreigon and Haxorus are version exclusive. These guys get Hydreigon, these guys get Haxorus. If they come into their get, if they come into his game, is it going to be that they that these guys can now get Hydreigon because it's Scarlet's version exclusive as opposed to them getting Haxorus, or is it that when he sees a Hydreigon, they're going to see a Haxorus, and it's going to be a bit of a difference there? If I did, if I was a betting man, it would probably be it's based on his game. I think that's I think that's a safe bet to make. It's based on his game. Pokemon you haven't yet discovered. Yeah, ha Pokemon you haven't yet discovered. That could also just be you going off into a new part of the game. Uh But how does that also handle with like when you go back to your game? How does it handle exploration? Cuz you did discover a whole new area, but then how does the Pokemon work with that? It would be really fun if it was a mix. If it was a mix of the two, that you can get new Pokemon and you also get to see opposing Pokemon. I'd be a big fan of that. Or even Work both ways. To race the map. Yeah, so obviously you get these things early. You get them early. That is my big question. How does that work? Enjoy all the Paldea region has to offer with family and friends. Since 
Oh, and you get this thing early. This, uh... The terrestrial phenomenon. Yeah, the terrestrial thing. You get this early. You're fighting a level 7 Lechonk. So you get this thing really early. You get this really early. So how does that factor in? That does look nice on Fort Coco. Pokemon in the Paldea region are able to terrestrialize, which can provide a boost to a Pokemon's type. And yeah, you get this early. Or no, it could it could be like how? What's the level of what's the level of Sprigatito right here? Because it could be that you level nine. You do get this early. He's got a ton of Pokemon. You get this early. How early do you get? Sprigatito is small. I didn't notice that. He is really small. Look at him compared to Lechonk. My jeez. Sprigatito, you look tiny. You're smaller than this bush. You look shorter than the grass. Sprigatito is a tiny boy. Like, he looked small before when it was compared to your trainer and you were walking next to him. But he is microscopic. My jeez. <laughs> the terrestrial phenomenon makes Pokemon shine like gems. Yeah, like, look at him compared to the grass. Pokemon shine like gems. Look at his size compared to this grass. He's, like, twice the size of grass. <laughs> he is tiny. Foy Coco, we can't really tell. Pokemon and we can't tell with Quaxly. Oh wait, no, no, no. We can from here. Uh, even if the grass is at a distance, he looks a bit bigger. And we can't tell with Quaxly. We don't have a good measuring stick. Yeah, Pikachu small. That makes sense. That makes sense. What type they become seems to depend on that Pokemon's Terra type. For example, an Eevee would typically remain normal type hmm. after terastalizing, but there could be Eevee that become grass or water type after terastalizing. We hope you'll try to catch Pokemon with rare Terra types. Hmm. Pokemon that have rare Terra types are more likely to appear in Terra raid battles. You can challenge okay, so... With up to three other trainers. Alright, so yeah, they do have this little thing here. It looks alright. I don't... I just don't find this these raids as intimidating or as interesting as Sword and Shield raids. Like, again, it is mainly that... It, what, it was definitely Sword and Shield was more imposing. Massive, giant Pokemon, they just naturally look a bit more imposing than just Crystal Pokemon. So that's, that's not a knock against this game. Definitely not a knock. It's just my own personal preference. And plus, everyone can terrestrialize as opposed to it being one person, which does make sense. Hmm. How hard is a Terra Den going to be? That is my question. How hard is a Terra Den going to be compared to a, gigant, to a Dynamax Den? Yeah, that looks smooth. That looks very, very nice. That ball looks a bit weird. Where is its shadow? The ball doesn't really have a shadow here. Hmm. I could have sworn in more recent games they've had the ball have a shadow when it hits the ground. Uh. I'll have to, like, load up my version of Sword and Shield to get a look at that later. Because I definitely can't set up the Elgato for everything right now. However, the ball doesn't have a shadow. It could just be me imagining, but I could have sworn they had that in other games. Alright. But so far, so good. It also looks like it's floating. Yeah, it looks like the ball is floating right here. Like, this would be where it is, but it looks like it's floating. It needs a shadow right here. It needs a little bit of a shadow right here, because that just looks a bit off. Looks a tad bit off to me.
Yeah, Sprigatito, Sprigatito looks about the same size as Pommy. And seeing the first display of Pommy, I didn't get that impression at all. Neither did I get that with Sprigatito. While evolving the adventure you can have in Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. We hope you look forward to the day you set out on your adventure. All right, all right, that, 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 that just about does it. So obviously I have a ton of questions, a ton of questions. Uh, but then again, the game, the thing did answer my questions. The thing did do what I asked. Like the presents, it did answer a bunch of the stuff I wanted to see. Number one. Yeah, number one, we got the region name. We could have had it before, uh, but they keep they keep saying it a lot, and I didn't remember hearing it anywhere else. So my assumption is, it was leaked or something. But they do have it here. Uh, it could have been announced a while ago, but I just didn't hear it. So the Paldea region, that's one. And then two is project rolling. Uh. Two, they gave us the map. They gave us the map. That is the other main thing I want to see. The map is here. My biggest question leaving this thing, and I will say this is my biggest question, what is this area here? That is my biggest question, because all the gyms are here. Every single gym is here. There's these big dead spots where nothing happens, but what is this thing? Is this new Isle of Armor stuff? Like, Isle of Armor type stuff, DLC area, and how is it going to be conveyed? Because that's my big question in an open world game. I don't think you can have that much stuff like that. That is a lot of gap between her back and the backpack, I'm just noticing. Alright, but that doesn't matter. That is my big question. How does this area fit in? Seeing the map, that is my biggest question. You will be enrolling of course I have other questions, but overall, it did answer that. It did confirm you can take on the gyms in any order you want. That is also good. You can take on the gyms any order you want. That's good. Open world. We already kind of could assume that, but that's what we got right now. My big, the big thing I do want to know is how does gym scaling work? How does gym scaling factor in? Because that is my big worry. I do want to be able to just walk my way up to the gym and get my butt kicked easily. I think that would be amazing. Uh, and I, and similarly, I want to be able to catch a big like level seventy Pokemon with a team of level like. Uh, 40 Pokemon, provided I throw enough potions at it and I get lucky with a Pokeball or something. Like, if I work my way there and I can fight this thing and I can catch it, I should be allowed to get it. I should be allowed to get a big experience boost and I should get a big new body on the team. I think that's more than fair if you put all your resources into catching it. I think that's fair. I didn't like Sword and Shield, how they just decided, oh yeah, this thing's too big, you're not allowed to catch it, and if you beat it, you just get a minor amount of experience. That's not fun. That is not fair. If I beat this thing, I should be allowed to get a big benefit from it. Because this thing's big, so I should be allowed to do that. Uh, the draw distance is my big question, is another big question. It's, uh, where is it? Where is the people? I think it was around here. Yeah, it was right around here. And yeah, this this stuff right here. The draw distance for this thing. Because Pachiris is looking weird. Uh, Swablu's looking weird. Are the kids looking weird here? I didn't even look at the kids right here. And the people. Yeah, the kids, the kids stuttering a bit too. The kids dropping some frames as opposed to this kid who's more forefront. So it's either everything is further away, your trainer is, like, way further back. Like, because my assumption was the trainer was, like, here and just out of camera. And we're seeing it from the trainer's perspective. But no, because these kids are pretty tall. So my assumption is that we're a bit further away. And then these kids are just looking smoother than the Pokemon. The human models look smoother than the Pokemon. That's my big question. How does draw distance factor in? Because I can't really tell how the draw distance is working. Pachirisu is looking weird. Humans are looking okay. And then both are looking weird here. So what is the draw distance? Uh, Sword and Shield, I overall felt it had pretty good draw distance. Uh, so yeah, that's another question. How does draw distance factor in? But yeah, quite a few questions leaving this. Overall, I am really glad that this came out. I'm. It answered a few things. It showed off a few more things. 
Uh, yeah, overall, I think a pretty... Overall, I'm happy with it. Overall, I am happy with Pokemon Presents. It showed off the things I wanted to see. It answered a few questions. <laughs> it gave us a few more things to think about. But that's my big question. What is that black area on the map? That is the number one question I have. I'll probably like post to Twitter saying my fa what my big questions are. But with that being said, I think that is a good place to end it. I think that's a solid place. We can end it here. Let's just do this. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, my first time trying like to be up early for something like this, not really doing a game because I, yeah, this is my first time doing a non-game related thing. I can definitely iron that out. I can definitely get better at this. But overall, I think, uh, even though no one showed up, that is pretty much what I wanted to see. An hour 30, not too bad. Smaller stream than normal, but still worth it. I will... I am going to private the stream. I'm going to private the stream, I'm going to unlist it, and then I'll bring it up to my chat when it's around 4 o'clock. And then we'll talk about it then, if I should, if I should open it for a discussion. Because I am going to discuss all the things that I saw here at four o'clock so i'm gonna see if i should unlock this stream or not and i'm gonna let them decide because currently i'm thinking i'm gonna lock it for right now and then people can figure it out i'll discuss it with them later but as of right now that is gonna be it bit of a bummer no one stopped by but then again that was fully expected everyone was doing pokemon presents so that's more than expected that no one showed up with that being said this has been Whew. This has been Faulty Product up at 6 in the morning. That was certainly fun. Uh, yeah, it went to 7.20. All right. Okay, yeah, no one stopped by. That's perfectly fine. It's what I expected, but yes. I hope to... S no, 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 okay. Yeah, this has been Faulty Product. I will be back as per usual at 4 o'clock. This was just a little special thing I figured I'll do because I'm really invested in Scarlet Violet. I really look forward to it coming out. I have a lot of faith in it. So far, this has just bolstered that faith. I just have a few more questions. But yeah, this has been Faulty Product. I'll be back at 4 o'clock, or roughly 4 o'clock if something always goes wrong. Whoever did stop by, thank you. It is Even if you didn't comment, even if you didn't follow, it's more than appreciated to just have the idea that someone stopped by. Even if you didn't, that's perfectly fine. That's what I expected. But yes. This has been Faulty Product. Take care. I will be back at roughly 4. And I hope to see you then. Take care.